Hi, um, I'm Ishan. Today I'll be talking about non-malleable codes, extractors, and secret sharing in two different models of um, tampering functions. Um, this is joint work with Shinli. All right, so the outline of the talk is the following, that we'll talk about three related objects. The first is non-malleable codes. So this arises in the intersection of coding theory and cryptography and has found a lot of nice applications. Um, it has a lot of um, cool work as well recently. Um, so the second object is non-malleable extractors. So this arises in the intersection of state randomness and cryptography and has found really strong applications in both of these areas. And the third object is non-malleable secret sharing. This is a recently defined notion, um, which has also attracted a lot of work. So let's start off with non-malleable codes. And um, to motivate non-malleable codes, let's recall error correcting codes. So error correcting codes, um, the problem is you have a message S, you want to transmit it over a noisy channel, and hopefully if too many bits are not tampered or flipped, um, you want to get, you want to recover back S. So the experiment is the following. So there's an encoding function, which encodes a message to a code word and an adversary tamper set. So C gets tampered to C prime. And then we decode back the tampered uh, code word to get um, S prime with the hope that S is equal to S prime. And the goal is um, to recover, of course, S, uh, to recover back S and also maximize the relative rate, so add less redundancy. So relative rate is the fraction uh, ratio of M over N. And the relative distance of the code, which is related to how well we can um, tolerate errors. So it's the min over all the pairwise Hamming distances of the code words um, normalized by the block length N. And um, if there are not too many um, flipped code words, uh, flipped bits in the code word, um, that is, if C and C prime are close, then we would want to recover back um, S. So this is unique decoding where um, the number of flip bits is less than half of the minimum distance. A more relaxed notion where you allow more number of bits to be flipped is list decoding where um, the guarantee need is um, weaker. You need just a list of uh, messages which contains the original message. So these have been heavily studied um, for decades in coding theory. Um, so one thing to notice is that um, the closeness and hamming distance of C and C prime is a severe restriction on the kind of adversaries that we can deal with. So for example, a simple adversary that flips all the bits, we cannot handle it um, if we want such guarantees. So this kind of motivates um, non-malleable codes. Um, so it's a relaxation of error correcting codes. Um, the tampering experiment is still the same. But now we look more closely to the adversary and fix a family of tampering functions F. And we think of a tampering function from this family acting on the code word. And the requirement is the following. So we need a weaker guarantee in non-malleable codes. The weaker guarantee is that either the tampered code word that we get back S prime is equal to S, which is really a favorable case. Or in the other case, S prime is completely unrelated to S. So this um, removes the case where the adversary can um, force one force us to um, decode to a uh, you know code a message of her choice. All right. So more formally, um, okay. So before defining more formally, the hope is that you know with this weaker requirement we can handle more general um, functions of uh, tampering functions. And to formalize this, one needs the encoder to be randomized. And um, to define this notion of unrelatedness, um, it's defined in the following way, that there is a distribution DF, which is independent of the message that you're starting with and the randomness that you use in the encoder. So it's a distribution over the space of messages and the bot symbol. And the requirement is that either S is equal to S prime, which is a good case, or S prime is in statistical distance close by this parameter epsilon to this distribution df. So df note that does not depend on s and epsilon is called the error parameter. And the closeness of distributions is in the usual statistical distance, which is half of the L1 distance. 
So this is the formal definition of a non-malleable code. Um, and the goals as uh, before is to maximize the rate of the code, uh, minimize the error parameter, and also handle more general families of trampling functions. And this was introduced uh, in 2010 by Zimbrioski, Petrozak, and Wix. There has been an explosion of research on non-malleable codes well beyond um, the stock. Um, so we'll be, um, in this talk, we'll be focusing on explicit constructions without any computational assumptions. And there's a host of applications of non-malleable codes. Well, a key theorem that is important um, in this pursuit for um, explicit constructions is that there exist non-malleable codes for really large classes of tampering functions. So Chirakti and Guruswami showed that as long as um, you know the size of the family is doubly exponential uh, with delta n, a parameter delta bounded um, away from one, then we actually there exists non-explicitly there exists really good uh, non-malleable codes. And of course, the question is um, for interesting tampering functions, can we actually construct such codes? Turns out a really popular model is the split state model where uh, the code word is thought to be split into say L parts, each part is kept on a server and we allow any arbitrary function to act on each um, server or part individually. This is a really um, popular model of tampering which has been heavily studied uh, the last few years, and now we have um, the best, almost the best possible that one could expect. So um, one cannot expect, expect, you know, NMCs in the one split state model because that's all functions. So in the two split state model, we have constant rate and negligible error, which is achieved in a really recent work. All right. Um, and one could ask what does, can we handle say global um, tampering models? And in fact, there's work um, on this. So there's um, local functions, um, functions which are inspired from uh, more complexity theory oriented um, things like say small depth circuits, um, linear functions. So most of this, so these functions, these tampering functions have access to all the bits of the code word as opposed to, you know, the partition model. Um, also polynomials over large fields. And this is in fact the focus of um, the current talk, which is constructing um, non-malleable codes beyond the partitioning model, beyond the partitioning model. All right. Okay, so to motivate our first sampling model, let's recall the two split state model. So here the code word again is split into two parts. F1 and F2 are arbitrary. F1 tampers the first half, F2 tampers the second half. So the first tampering model we'll consider is the interleaved split state model. So this generalizes the split state model in the following way that now the partition is unknown. So still there are two functions, F1 and F2. Um, F1 acts on some unknown n bits. F2 acts on some remaining unknown n bits. And the partition is unknown. So it's arbitrarily interleaved. And of course, it's obvious that this generalizes the split state model. And the motivation is, one natural motivation is perhaps the server um, is communicating to a co common party who decodes um, the code word, the tampered code word, and we do not know in which order um, the bits are arriving. Also, more importantly, this goes beyond the known partition model, which is um, kind of the motivation of this work. Can we um, go towards global um, tampering or not knowing what the partition is? And our main theorem here is an explicit code um, with relative rate inverse polynomial and um, ex sub exponential error. And this is, in fact, the first um, explicit construction in this model. And this question was raised by Chirakti and Guruswami in 2014, and uh, we make progress on this problem. And of course, um, a natural open problem is to improve the parameters of the code. More importantly, um, it would be great to achieve constant rate. All right. Um, the second tampering model we consider is the following. Um, this is inspired by other areas of theoretical computer science. Um, so this model is by composing tampering functions in the following way. 
And let f and g be two arbitrary classes of trampoline functions. Define f composed with g to be the set of all functions that you can um, construct by composing a function from f with a, compo uh, with a function from g in, and using the usual function composition. So it's, so there you could, one could think of this as two attacks of trampling. So the adversary gets to choose a function G and then tamper the code word and then again choose F and then um, apply F. And this is of course a natural way of defining more and building uh, by composition. You can build more powerful classes of adversaries. And such things have been heavily studied in other areas of theoretical computer science. Um, like communication complexity and also complexity theory. All right, and our main result is um, for the specific two classes. So F is the interleaved um, split state and G is linear. Um, the set of linear functions considered from n bits to n bits uh, imposing the field structure or the vector space structure. And we give an explicit NMC for F composed with G with um, polynomial rate and sub-exponential error. And one could think of the tampering as happening in the following way that a code word is first acted upon globally by this linear function. Um, and then, um, you know, F1 and F2 tampers it. So the picture shows just a split state tampering, but we can handle, of course, um, more general kinds of tampering. And um, this is, uh, the first such non-trivial um, construction for such compositions. Um, and um, this significantly generalizes our study of, you know, trying to construct non mandible codes for more um, global tampering functions. And um, we hope that this starts a more systematic study of non mandible codes with respect to composition. In particular, a really interesting open question is, given say non malleable codes for two arbitrary tampering functions, F and G, families F and G, can we you know, find more general ways of um, constructing non malleable codes for the composition? In particular, um, our methods do not even seem to work if we flip the order of tampering. So for instance, if we start first apply you know, a split state tampering and then a linear tampering, we do not know how to handle this case. All right, so this finishes our part on non malleable codes, and we'll move on to non malleable extractors now. And the connect is this beautiful connection of Cherakchi and Guruswami, who showed that if you can construct seedless non malleable extractors with some invertibility property, you can actually construct non malleable codes. All right. So let's start off with randomness extractors. Um, so informally, an extractor is an object which you know um, transforms weak random sources. So random sources which have some entropy but is not purely random to output bits which are purely random. And the motivation is you know bunch of applications in different areas of computer science, and the fact that you know in nature we do not have high quality sources of randomness. And pictorially, it looks like you get a sample from a weak source X, and you output a random variable applying an extractor such that the random variable is purely random. Or more precisely, one that the output of the extractor is close in statistical distance to uniform on M bits. All right. So how do you measure quality of a source? The usual way of doing it is using min entropy, um, which is a source has min entropy K. If it places weight at most to power minus k on any element in its support. Um, and um, of course, it's not hard to see that uh, if if you have a distribution on n bits, its min entropy is between zero and n. Um, the higher the min entropy is, the more random the source is. And we'll be talking about n comma k sources, which is a distribution on n bits with min entropy at least k. And for most arguments, you could think of X as just uniform on some subset, some unknown subset of size two power K. And it looks something like this. All right, and what's a seedless extractor? 
Um, so the first observation that one makes here, which is folklore, is that um, there is no extractor even for the class of n comma n minus one sources. So of course we need one extractor for a class of or family of sources. And even if you know this family of sources has really high entropy, there's no single extractor. The proof is not hard, but I'll skip it um, due to lack of time. But the good news is if you assume some structure, some more structure on your source, then you can actually show that there exists extractors. And this has been a long line of work for the last three or more decades. So one popular model is the independent source model where you assume that your source X can be split up into independent sources. Um, or you could assume some algebraic structure, for example, that's uniform on some unknown k-dimensional subspace, or it's produced by a low complexity algorithm. Well, there are many such examples. And here we are concerned about non-malleable extractors, which is a significant strengthening of seedless extractors. So this was introduced by Charak and Guruswami. Setting is the following, that you have a family of sources and a family of adversaries. So for any source in this family and any adversary in this family, what you want is that the output of the non-malleable extractor on X looks uniform, even when you're given the output of the non-malleable extractor on the tampered function, tampered version of X. All right. So, in terms of an adversary, suppose adversary is given, you know, the output of the non-malleable extractor on f of x. Even then, that adversary, uh, the output of the non-malleable extractor on x looks almost uniform to the adversary. All right. So informally, you know, it, uh, this non-malleable extractor removes the correlation between x and f of x. And of course, a trivial counterexample for such non-malleable extractors to exist is suppose f is the identity function. And literally they're, you know, the same random variable. So it turns out that if you just remove the simple condition of f not having any fixed points, then you can show that there exists non-malleable extractors for very expressive families of um, adversaries. And the crucial connection that was established by um, Chirakchi and Guruswami was that if you give me a non-malleable extractor that works for very high entropy um, with respect to a family, and it's also invertible, meaning that given an output, you can sample efficiently from the pre-image, then there exists a non-malleable code with respect to this family. And roughly the decoder is the non-malleable extractor and the encoder is the sampler for the pre-image. And the related rate is m over n and the error, um, if you ignore the parameters, what you want is really low error with respect to um, the number of bits you want to output. So that's really, so the lower the error you can achieve, the better the rate you can um, get. So there are many known um, constructions in particular for the split state model and also for affine tampering functions and small depth circuits. And our main result is a non-malleable extractor for the interleaved split state model and also the compose of linear with interleaf. And we also show efficient sampling for these non-malleable codes, which immediately gives our um, non-malleable code results. All right. And I'll say very brief words about our techniques. In particular, suppose let's specialize to the case of the interleaved tampering. We have two functions and the interleaving is given by a permutation and we want to construct a non-malleable extractor such that given two independent sources X and Y, which is arbitrarily permuted, we want the output of the non-malleable extractor to look uniform, even conditioned on its output on the tampering. Um, and very briefly, it goes through this framework that was set up in my previous work with Vipul Goel and Shin Lee, which uses something called as an advice generator, which we can set task first to just outputting short strings, which is just um, such that, um, so Z is just, you know, X, Y uh, with the permutation. Uh, so what we want is that the advice generator's output is just not equal to the advice generator's output on um, the tampered copy. So this is much weaker than looking uniform condition on the tampered copy. 
So this part is done through error tracking codes and samplers, which builds on previous work. And the second part is heavy machinery, which is called as advice correlation breakers, which um, takes, um, okay, so in here, there is a small typo. So the second correlated part should be advice with phi prime. So the advice correlation breaker takes phi and the tampered copy along with the advice, which we know is different, and outputs some outputs a random variable which is uncorrelated from the tampered copy. So these two can be combined um, in the natural way, and it has been done in previous work, and our more, most of our work goes in actually um, constructing these objects. And very briefly, this is constructed using um, alternating extraction in um, non-trivial ways. All right. And the final part is secret sharing. All right, so recall that in a secret sharing scheme, you're given a secret S and you distribute the secret among um, parties such that um, any, so this is threshold secret sharing where any R parties can recover the secret, but no T parties can reconstruct the secret. That's the privacy. So non-malleable secret sharing was introduced very recently by Goel and Kumar. Um, and it has many recent constructions. And here, you are, you need that it's still a secret sharing scheme, but also on top of it, you need that if an adversary um, acts on the secrets, then either um, the recovered secret by um, our parties is unrelated to the original secret or it's the same secret. So it's pretty similar to non malleable codes. All right, and our result is the following that we give uh, such non malleable secret sharing schemes in the when the shares are binary and the adversary can split um, the partitions into two arbitrary uh, in arbitrary ways and tamper each partition arbitrarily using any function of their choice. And on top of it, it can apply a global function, which is linear. And we need that um, the partitions are not too large, so it's bounded away from n by n power dent. All right. So in relation to previous work, either it was not known how to handle binary shares, so the share size was larger, or the adversary could not handle a global round of tampering. All right, so I'll conclude with some open questions. Um, so a natural open question is handling more um, global tampering, are the natural families of global tampering? In particular, one direction could be, um, can we handle more compositions? We just gave a specific example in our um, work. And our techniques do not even um, extend to, you know, when you reverse the order of the tampering, and it's a really intriguing open question. And also improve parameters of the various um, non-malleable codes that we have constructed in our work. Thanks for listening.